Good evening. All honor, all power, and all glory belongs to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study here at the Church of the Open Door. Uh, we want to welcome each and every one of you to come on in and let's have a good time with the Lord tonight. I pray that you're excited as I am, even if we're still trying, still on our feeling from Pentecost, you know, but we still got to study the Word, so we're going to do that tonight with our own Reverend Dr. Mark Lee C. Taylor. Amen? Now, please, ladies and gentlemen, as I always ask you, please get your Bible, your paper, your pencil, your water, and let's get ready to get fed the Word of God tonight, because it's going to be awesome, as it always is. Now, let's sing this song together. You know it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. Yes, he has made me glad and I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. Yes. He has made me glad, and I will rejoice, for He has made me glad. Oh, this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice, and be glad in it. And be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. This is the day. Glory to God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to get your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 2. I'm going to bring something back to your memory. You all know this, but let's read it again. And you'll know exactly who this is that we're reading about. Amen. Exodus chapter 2, starting at verse 1. Now a man from the house of Levi went and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. The woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that he was a godly child, she hid him three months. And when she could hide him no longer, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes and dabbed it with butmen and pitch and put the child in it and placed it among the reeds at the river bank, brink. And his sister stood at a distance to know what was to be done with him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maids walked beside the river and saw the basket among the reeds and sent the ma her maid to fetch it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and lo, the babe was crying. She took pity on him. She took pity on him. Wow. And said, this is one of the Hebrew children. 
Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him. And the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. And she named him Moses. For she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And this is the word of the Lord. Yes, thanks be to God. Oh, that was a good one, wasn't it? Now, my New Testament scripture is coming from the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. And if you have it, I'm reading from the Revised Standard Version, whatever version you may have. It might read differently, but the message is still the same. And here we go. In the first book of O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up and he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion by many proofs appearing to them during 40 days and speaking of the kingdom of God while and while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you had heard from me, for John the Baptist, for John baptized you with water, but before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, Will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know these things, these times of sessions, seasons, which the Father has fixed by his own authority. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven, as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes, and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come into the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew and Philip and Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew, James and son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas, son of James. All these with one accord devoted themselves to praying together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. And this is the word of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you this evening, Father, to give you praise, honor, and glory, Father God. Lord, we just want to thank you for the upper room experience we had on Sunday, Father. And Father, we ask that you continue to fill us as we go through the week, Lord God. Keep our, keep our cups full, Father, with your Holy Spirit so we can continue to glorify and magnify your name, Lord God. Because, Father, we need you. We love you. We adore you, Lord God. So, Father, we've been blessed, but we want to get blessed again by the word tonight. So come in and be with us tonight, Lord God. I ask that you bless my pastor, Lord God, as he comes forth to, to bring it forth to the people today, Lord God, that they can, be, they can receive it and say, what must I do to be saved, Father? So, Father, come in. Do it right now. In the name of Jesus, Father. And I'll be mindful to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for studying the word with me tonight. And now you're going to get fed the word of God by the greatest man on the planet, our Reverend Doctor. A Reverend Doctor that hails all the way from Chicago, Illinois. South side, as he says, South Side. South Side. South Side. South side. <laughs> yes. So now, without further ado, I want to bring forth to you our own Reverend Dr. Mark V.C. Taylor. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Work. Hard work. Work. singing one of their uh, PT, physical training songs, Hard Work, amen. And uh, I had Sister Richardson play that song because we are on <coughs> one of my favorite texts in the whole Bible from where we draw the teaching that the Christian is supposed to be a soldier, an athlete, and a farmer. And that is Second Timothy. So go with me there to 2 Timothy chapter 1, um, chapter 2, I'm sorry, chapter 2, chapter 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And this is so good. I want to read the first seven verses. I want to thank Deacon Flowers for yes, uh, leading devotion. God bless thank you, Deacon sir. Flowers. It's my pleasure. Amen. I right. want to thank Sister Richardson for being here. Amen. Uh, I know they were tired from Sunday, as am I. <laughs> ah, but what did the song say? Hard work. <laughs> Amen. And a soldier has to be ready to work hard. That's right. Amen. So uh, I'm going to read this first, since this is a Bible study. Just by way of contrast, I'm going to read three versions. I'm going to ask you to stand with me only for the first. <laughs> and then... Um, we're going to uh, get further into the teaching of the soldier role of every Christian. All right? Um, so 2 Timothy 2 and 1 uh, reads as follows. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And what you have heard from me before many witnesses entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Share in suffering as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No soldier on service gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is to satisfy the one who enlists him. An athlete 
my, my grandmother she just sometimes said athlete. Mm -hmm. An athlete is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. It is the hard working farmer who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will grant you understanding in everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And now let's go to the uh, New Living Translation. It's a very wonderful translation. Sister Cassia Dockery introduced me to this. And I'm, I'm appreciative because I like the renderings here. Sometimes. <laughs> a lot, not all the time. But let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3. I'm reading now in the um, New Living Translation. Every, no it says, I'm sorry, endure suffering along with me as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. As Christ's soldier, do not let yourself become tied up in the affairs of this life. For then you cannot satisfy the one who has enlisted you in his army. <laughs> enlisted you in his army. Mm -hmm. Follow the Lord's rules for doing his work just as an athlete either follows the rules or is disqualified and wins no prize. Hard-working farmers are the first to enjoy the fruit of their labor. Think about what I am saying. The Lord will give you understanding in all of these things. And because we're in Bible study, let's just take one more version. Let's take 2 Timothy, the second chapter, and the first seven verses in the easy to read version. If you got a young person, you might want to buy them. I was talking to somebody. You might want to buy them an easy to read Bible or a good news Bible to start off with. The good news Bible is also very excellent. Um, I don't have one on my desk, but it's also an excellent Bible. But let's look at uh, a newer uh, common language Bible called the Easy to Read Bible. Timothy, you are a son to me, it says in verse 1. Be strong in the grace that we have because we belong to Christ Jesus. What you have heard me teaching publicly, you should teach to others. Share these things with people you can trust. Then they will be able to teach others these same things. And you notice in um, in both the easy to read and the New Living Translation, a lot of the male pronouns that were in the RSV have been changed to become uh, more inclusive. Um, For instance, it says uh, in the RSV, it says, what you learn, teach to other men also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, in verse 2, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Chapter 2, verse 2 in um, the uh, New Living Translation says, uh, oh, I didn't even read it. I skipped it. Let me read it to you. It says, teach these great truths to trustworthy people. Now, I believe the Greek did say men, but the translators wanted to be inclusive of women, so they said people. But we ought to know that it is a shift. To truths to trustworthy people are to pass them on to others. Now let's see what the easy to read version does in two and two. It says, what you have heard me teach publicly, you should teach to others. All right, so this is why we read different translations. We see different things. We learn more about the text. We learn more dimensions of the text. It says, share these things with people you can trust. Not men, but people you can trust. Then they will be able to teach others these same things. Now, all of the verses have that part. That what you receive, you're supposed to be able to give it to someone who can teach others. Which means you should be able to teach it yourself. Now verse 3, as a good soldier of Christ Jesus, accept your share of the troubles we have. I like this. Uh, I like the suffering because uh, I grew up reading that. But I like this, accept your share of the troubles we have. A soldier wants to please his commanding officer. 
so he does not spend any time on activities that are not a part of his duty. Athletes in a race must obey all the rules to win. The farmer who works hard deserves the first part of the harvest. Think about what I'm saying. The Lord will help you understand it all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our head. God, we thank you for your holy word. God, we thank you that you did the hard work on Calvary to bring us to God. Yes. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you open a way. You open a path with your blood. And now you call us to yourself to do your will in the earth. We thank you, Lord, for those who have come tonight to study your word. Take over, fill us with the Holy Spirit, and let us hear from heaven, not from man. Bless everyone listening, whether in their kitchen, their living room, their bedroom, whether in a table or in a car, wherever they are, bless them to hear your word and to respond by being obedient. Help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. Help us to move in the spirit of the word and not just the letter. This is our prayer. In the name that's above every name, the mighty and Max's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray God's people said, Amen. 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 I'm going to go back to the RSV. And uh, I want to talk tonight a little bit about, I want to talk further about the Christian as a soldier. The Christian as a soldier. And what do soldiers do? Uh, well, first of all, soldiers are drafted or enlisted. And as a matter of fact, one of our versions, uh, I believe it's the New Living Translation, said, Christ has enlisted you. Um, and I remember when I was a child, a lot of men were afraid of being drafted to go to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And they did not want to go. That's right. Because Vietnam was really the first guerrilla war that the United States fought. And the United States lost the Vietnam War. Yes. We had a score of something like 45 to 0 until Vietnam. Then it became 45 to 1. And this is why a lot of times Vietnam is not talked about in a lot of discussions. Uh, there's a lot to be said. Uh, when people, when the soldiers came back, I think people might have been very harsh on them. And that might not have been warranted. They were only doing what they were taught was their duty. They did not deserve the attacks that they got. Many of them came back addicted mm -hmm. to drugs yes. because part of the Vietnamese uh, war was people trying to invade the heroin trade in Thailand and Burma and places like that. Uh, many came back with PTSD and uh, there was not a fervent attempt to address that. You can't take a man, turn him into a killer, release him into a situation where children have moms in their stomach and pull a cord and blow up the mom, blow up themselves, blow up the camp and bring them back. You can't take them in a situation where they take a step and uh, bamboo shoots up through their leg or they take a step and there's an explosion. You can't take a, a situation where they go into a village and some of their own people start shooting all the Vietnamese because they're just so amped up. You can't take a person in that situation where you can shoot liquid fire from a gun and burn up people, napalm. You can't do that and bring them back and say, well, I mean, so the war is over, just be normal. Yeah. Cannot do that. Uh, one of the great sins of this country is how it treats its veterans, uh, many of whom are homeless, many of whom cannot access resources. But uh, we're drafted, and so as soldiers, we have to say yes. We're enlisted, and again, we have to say yes. We can't go what's called AWOL, absent without excuse, or absent without leave. That's what AWOL stands for, which means you're a deserter. Many people in the Vietnam War ran off to Canada. Some ran down to Mexico. Uh, AWOL, absent while on leave, without leave. Uh, God does not want us to be absent after we've said yes to the draft, after we have signed up and enlisted. Many of us go AWOL. We're absent in church sometimes. Many Christians, and I'm not necessarily talking to you, you are watching, I'm preaching to the choir, but I'm talking about many Christians are AWOL. They're absent in daily Bible study, and that includes some of us. AWOL in daily prayer, not keeping our prayer schedule. Listen, when we have a great holy day like we had Sunday, 
Uh, for those watching, we had a tremendous Pentecost Sunday. Yes, praise the Lord God. really moved. Uh, yes, the Lord moved in the service. Uh, they, Sister Richardson told me I preached for an hour. I couldn't believe it, but then I started looking at the tapes and they were for an hour. Preach it, anyhow. Preach it, Yeah, but you know, I usually set a timer when I get up to preach. And sometimes I struggle with the timer because the screen closes on the phone. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I'm going to take you behind the scenes and preach. I was setting up the time and the Lord said, leave it alone. Amen. Preach and don't look at the Come time. Come on. There you go. Because you got something that you got to get out today. There you go. So I preached. Yes. And I don't usually preach for an hour. Amen. And if I preach for an hour, it probably was 45 minutes of sermon and 15 minutes of shouting and something like that. At least I hope that's what it was. But in any case... I just asked the Lord to leave me, and um, we had a beautiful service Yes. in the service. And then we had an anointing service where I laid hands on everyone. Now, I believe many people were filled with the Spirit during the service, during the Word. But I laid hands with everyone and told them to march forward, march into progress, march into blessings, march into a higher level, march into something you have not achieved or attained or done yet. Amen. And while I was... Uh, praying, I lay hands on people. Some people fell out. That is known as being slain in the spirit. That is when the Lord takes you to unconsciousness so the Holy Spirit can do some things with you. And if you are slain in the spirit, when you come out, you're supposed to come out with revelation, with conviction, or come out with relief. Because sometimes people are so worried, the Lord got to knock them out to give them peace. Amen. And so we just have to, but you don't have to get slain in the spirit. I was filled with the Spirit just from preaching the Word. As I began to preach, the Lord began to fill me. Because the night before, our brother Charles Kearney had passed. I was there when they took his body out. It was very sad. And, and, and the sadness registered in me. Not only was he a faithful church member, he was a great friend to me. Yes. He was a great friend to me. And so I, was, I woke up very sad. I didn't really sleep. I think I slept two hours. I woke up sad. But I know that if you walk by faith, God will deliver you. Yes. And I know if you make one step, God will make two, three, four, five, and six. So also, I am trained by this word. I'm a soldier. And the first thing about a soldier is, and I'm, I'm going to talk about, I'm talking about what soldiers do, but let me say this. All soldiers in the United States Army have one standing order. All soldiers in the United States Army have one outstanding order. It's an order for everybody all the time. And this is the order. You just taking notes, write this down. Accomplish the mission. Now somebody said, how you know this, Pastor Tell? Well, as I shared with you, when I was in high school, I was a student officer in my high school ROTC. I was a commanding officer. And I got an ROTC. I was impressed with it. Military men, I was impressed with my Uncle Paul, I was impressed with my father for many reasons, but my father shared some things with me about the military, a lot of people didn't want to talk about. I was impressed with my uncle. Everybody I knew who was in the military had a certain strength, order, and discipline. And I knew that the military had something to do with that. So when I got in high school, plus I was trying to uh, avoid gym, I think, too, mm. I'll tell the truth. You know, because I didn't have a good gym experience in grammar school. They was trying to kill us with push-ups and stuff. Mm. But also, I wanted to see, I wanted something different. And I wanted to see what the ROTC was, the Reserve Officers Training Corps. And indeed, I became officer. And I became head officer. And I studied the manual. Unlike some other student leaders, I studied the manual. And I found out everyone in the United States Army, from the smallest private to the five-star general, has a standing order, and that order is accomplish the mission. Now, they're gonna receive many, many, many other orders, but that's the first thing we have to do as soldiers to accomplish the mission. And I knew this scripture, and I'm, I'm talking about Sunday, and I'm gonna let that go. I knew the scripture to share in suffering. Um, another place, the Bible, one of, I read a translation of this version that says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ Jesus. And there's a lot of things that are hard, but you can do them if you press through. And so I was determined to press through my own grief, 
own lack of sleep. And when you do that, you get a blessing. The Lord filled me up and I began to pray for people and pray for a lot of people, but how many people pray for? It must have been about 35, 40, maybe more. No, all, all day, how many people pray for? Oh, oh. Yeah, that's absolutely. Since Rich is how many people? This Rich is good. I'm like uh, 150 almost. Okay, since so Rich is at 150. Okay. Probably a little more than that. Yeah. Maybe more than that. And I laid hands on each one and I prayed. And I mean, I prayed for each person. Yes, you did. I took time to pray for each person. But it seemed to me like the time <laughs> is like this because I was in the spirit. Now, while other people fall out, I'm in the spirit to go on, to focus on each individual. I didn't, if somebody fell out, then my focus is moving on to the next person, all right? And to watch the service. Because as a soldier, my job is to accomplish the mission. And the mission was to challenge each member who came up for an anointing to move forward, no matter what your age, no matter what your physical health, no matter what you're going through, you serve the God of the universe. You serve the God, oh man, what did they say? They were saying it's over two trillion galaxies, all right? Every galaxy has over five billion stars. I don't know what the math is, but that's the God that you serve. So God is not through with you. If you're alive, God has some other great things for you to do. And God wants you to march forward into it. God wants you to march forward against your struggles, against your opposition. Because you're a soldier and you're going to win. So, um, as the soldier, what do they do? They, en they enlist. Now, once the soldier enlists, then they train. So, put this in your notes. What do soldiers do? They train. And you've seen movies with the training camp. Um, you've seen... Uh, Perhaps you see Full Metal Jacket yeah. about the Marine Corps trainer. Uh, my favorite movie of training is uh, a old Jack Webb. Jack Webb was a detective on Dragnet, mm -hmm. and he did a movie called The D.I. <laughs> that's old. Uh, you remember that thing? Yes, sir. And uh, that's my favorite movie. Yes. But there's other training. But what's your favorite military movie? Uh, I was watching it again the other day, Private Ryan. Saving, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, it was all last. Uh, do they have a training scene in there? Uh, yes, in the, in the beginning, yes. In the very beginning. In the very one beginning. of the most realistic movies. And I'm going to say something about that. Yeah. Because I, I caught the end. Of, I, I didn't want to watch it because yeah. I caught the end. What's your favorite? You, you like war movies? It's not a war movie. It's military, though. What? It's called Cadet Kelly. Cadet Kelly. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's it about? It's a Disney movie. It's about. It's a Disney movie. Wait, 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 wait. I should have known. No, I got to be. My father becomes a commanding chief or commanding officer or something of that nature. And so she has to join something that kind of is like a ROTC. And so she goes to have to go through the training. She's actually a free spirited person, but she has to go through this training of boot camp. Oh, and Lord. She has to shine shoes and oh, Lord. she's a maggot, I guess that's what they call it. And so she has to spit on shoes, shine shoes, and wear the... Well, the lowest person can be stuff. called a whole lot of things. Oh, okay. So they probably called... She was at the bottom. Yeah. So they probably called her maggot. Yeah. 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 Uh, I got to... Where is my... You, you remind me that. Captain Kelly? Cadet Kelly. Cadet Kelly. Yeah. I'm going to watch that. Just <laughs> rich guy. She got me watching more Disney movies, but some of them are real good. And some of them I, get, I don't sing the songs from them and everything. So I'm going to watch that one, okay? I'm going to make you watch it. Well, I can't make you because you like it. I'll make it myself <laughs> and you'll watch it. But it's good to watch some of these movies because um, that's how training went. When I was in ROTC my first year, the older guys loved to torture us in physical training. Their goal was to make us fall out. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't in, I went to high school, I wasn't in great shape. But boy, those dudes, those dudes just worked us. So by the time I got to be a senior and I was on the track team, we were laying folks out in training. And so we we in the in the Deacon's training class, yes. we started to do PT, oh, physical yeah. training. Oh, yes. Uh, in the leadership training class, both Deacon Flowers yes. and Deacon Training, Sister Richardson's in leadership training, and uh, it was intense, was it not? Yes, it was. All right. Yes, it was. Oh, Sister Richardson said, oh, it wasn't intense for her. She's, <laughs> she's going to be hot stuff. She's going to be Cadet <laughs> Kelly over there. Okay. How many jumping jacks did we do? We always did 100, 150. Yeah. At least. Mm -hmm. Oh, but we, some days we just did a whole lot, right? Yes. How many push ups we do? 50. Uh, 50. How many sit-ups we do? Basically, what we were at, 
25. Yeah. 25. Yeah. yeah. I remember that. 25. That's the most I could have done. Well, they did 25. Yeah. Class did more. Okay. Yeah. What do we do a lot of, Sister Richardson? Uh, wall push ups. Cause it was How many wall push ups we do? Until we couldn't count no more, until people started stopping. Until failure? Yes. How, how much was, how many? Sometimes we go up to 60, 70. 60, 70 push-ups. And how many jumping jacks in your leadership uh -huh. training? Uh -huh. 100 or more. 100. We did, I tried to give people an, an experience of having pain. Yes, she Because did. it's certain things that you only know about yourself when you've been in pain. Yes. And you know how to push yourself in pain. Once you know, I'm going to tell you this as a soldier, once you know how to push yourself in pain, by training physically, when you get to the battle and you're in pain, you can do what? Push yourself. Push yourself. Keep going. That's okay, right. keep, going. keep going. And that's the name of the game for a soldier. So soldiers train. They train with uh, weapons. They train with hand-to-hand -hand combat. I was watching, uh, I was sitting down and I was actually, I was watching football game and I fell asleep and I woke up and it was a um, documentary on about the coach of the Florida football team. What's his Don name? Shula? No, that no, was, the, oh. the Florida <coughs> University of Florida. Tim oh. Tebow's coach, oh. Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, yeah. And he said, because he wanted to win the championship, he had torturous training. They call it torture time, and they 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 exercised until they couldn't move. They did hundreds of drills, but when they got out on the football field, they were tough, they were tight. Now, um, and some people didn't like it, some people couldn't take it, some people quit. But the end result was they won two championships, should have won three. Okay, he went on, he went to Ohio State, where he did win another championship. So he took his winning ways somewhere else. And one of the winning ways is you got to train. Yes. And a lot of times people don't like to be trained. I remember I had a goddaughter, not Sister Richardson, and I told her I was training her. She said, you ain't got to train me, I ain't no dog. Mm -hmm. Well, she lived long enough to find out if you don't get training, you pay the price. Yes. And when you do get training, you're ready. Mm -hmm. All right? So we shouldn't resent discipline. We shouldn't resent training. Uh, one of the reasons our church currently is blessed is because uh, we've been trained. And I've been trained. I've been trained to do the things that I'm doing. And uh, I've been trained to uh, to be disciplined. So soldiers train. What else do soldiers do? Soldiers guard. Are y'all with me now? Yes, soldiers, sir. they draft, they enlist, they train. Oh, wait a minute, hold up. There's another, I'm sorry, I skipped something. Fight. Soldiers fight. And of course, this is the main purpose of training so that the soldier can fight. Now, I gave you um, some homework to go watch All's Quiet on the Western Front. Did you, did you watch it? I didn't get a chance to Did you watch it? Okay, I got two truant students. Yeah, you got two students. You're ready for two truants. They see how deep possibly get ready. Look, go watch that movie. Okay, I love it. All's Quiet on the Western Front. It's in German. Yes. And you got to watch the subtitle, but it's a great movie. Amen. Saving Private Ryan is a great movie also. And it saved, now, since you've seen that, Sister Richardson, and everyone wants, I want you to go, and if you have not seen it, only if you have not seen it. If you've seen it, you know this. If you haven't seen it, go watch Saving Private Ryan. Because the first scenes of the Americans landing on the beach, yes. uh, I don't know if it was in Normandy or where it was. Yeah, yeah it was Normandy. Uh, it was Normandy. The first scenes of them landing on the beach right. where for a few minutes they were sitting ducks yep. to the Germans up on the hills in the beach mm -hmm. who were in metal line, rock line bunkers is one of the greatest scenes in um in a uh, cinema it's brutal too uh it, yes let me i should warn you it is brutal but uh it's one of the most realistic scenes now when it comes to vietnam if you watch platoon the same thing yes platoon is very realistic uh uh but if you watch saving private ryan you get a sense of the intensity of battle yes. the intensity of battle and a lot of times, we as Christians, particularly with so many versions of modern Christianity, we get the idea that God is some big genie whose only job is to bless us mm -hmm. uh, and give us more stuff. That's an American watered-down version of Christianity that I do not teach 
or subscribe to. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to get it, you have to go somewhere else. I'm not, I don't spend time attacking people because God didn't tell me to do that. He told me to spend time doing what he told me to do. But read the Bible. God is not some genie that's sitting around waiting to give you things. Come on, man. God is a person. And as a person, God is a king. God is a ruler. Yes. And as a ruler, God has a kingdom. Mm -hmm. And the kingdom is at war. God's kingdom is the kingdom of light. He's at war with the kingdom of darkness. He's at war with the soldiers of darkness. All right? And... If you want to know the worst situations in the world, watch the news. Yes. Uh, watch the news. Okay. You'll see all kinds of uh, things. Uh, I was watching something, uh, and, and one of the things that happens to me is I watch YouTube and I go to sleep and then I wake up and something crazy. You know? Well, this man was, his doctor was analyzing this woman. She reached a certain point. She started cheating on her husband. She broke up. He begged her to come back. They got back together. She was having sex with this man. She got with this man and shot her husband in the head. And uh, uh, got caught. Okay. So she could be with this man. Um, and they were trying to explain it, saying that something happened to her brain. She was at a certain age and something happened in the frontal lobe. But... No, because she was lying. Mm -hmm. She was devious. This poor man, he didn't have any wisdom. His wife had left him, and he was begging her to come back. And he had a 500,000 policy mm -hmm. on his life. Yes. Yeah. That woman shot him in the head. Called the police and said somebody came in and shot him in the head. Put the gun and a towel in the dryer. And the police in the dryer. The police searched the house. They found the dryer. They knew it was her gun, her fingerprint, and had some gloves, some rubber gloves, in the in the top in the in the sheet with her DNA in it. And and so I'm watching this. I'm saying, oh boy, Lord, what do I make of this? The Lord said, these are the worst situations in this war. The devil used lust. He used deceit, he used dishonesty to kill this man, put this woman in prison, destroy this other man's family. Because the man she was with, he had a wife and kids. So we're at war. And every now and then you hear the worst outcomes of the war. All right, but if you look in your family, you see the war. You trying to hold your family together and keep them under God, you can see things pulling them away. You're trying to keep your children safe, Teach them how to live a godly life. You see other influences coming in. That's the war. That's the war. And one of the things the Bible is telling us is approach it like a war. Yes. Have an attitude of I'm, I'm going to endure what I have to endure. I'm going to train myself. I'm signed up. I'm going to train myself. But it's going to be a heavy fight. Yes. Anytime you watch a great fight, it's heavy. So, uh, I don't know why I'm keep going to these stories, but I'm giving examples. These keep coming to mind. So I'm sleeping and I'm waking up. I'm in the same chair. It's the same sleep run, trying to recover from Pentecost. And I wake up and I see the, the boxing championship of the world. Tyson Fury. What do they call him? The king, the Irish. They call him something, the Irish something. Anyway, he's a great fighter. He was fighting this guy named Music, who was also a great fighter. And... Tyson Fury was almost falling out. This guy hit him so hard five or six times. And the referee wouldn't stop the fight. Tyson Fury fell all over the ring. <laughs> he fell all over the ropes. And then he came back and hit the guy a couple of times. He's tough. But the guy was hitting him so hard and so good, he won the fight. And it was a good fight. It was a fight. And some of us recoil from watching a good fight. <laughs> I find him. I find that many people have never been in a fight. And one of the things about a fight is vicious. Yes, it is. One of the things about a fight is, is, is unreal. Sometimes you can be fighting somebody that do something and you say to yourself, they did that. And it will enrage you and you find yourself having all kind of strength. And then after the fight is over, you all stressed up, beat up, and you didn't even feel it. Because your adrenaline was so high. Yeah, yeah. 
I used to take martial arts the next day I would wake up and my body would be full of red and purple bruises. I didn't even know because I was getting mines in. Okay. It was a fight. It was a fight. And we were in a fight with the three enemies. What are the three enemies? You should know. What's the three enemies? The three enemies. What's the three enemies? <laughs> Sticky flop, look at the wrist. Don't you know, Dick? What's yeah. the three enemies? The world, yeah. the flesh, and the devil. The world, culture, society against God, without God. The flesh, the unspiritual nature, and the devil, the leader of a kingdom of demons that spiritually influence people with unnatural power. And energy. What are the three? What are the three enemies? World, flesh, and the devil. World, the flesh, and the devil. Okay, I got it. Got All it. right. And when we say flesh, we don't mean flesh as in body. We mean unspiritual nature. <laughs> so in flesh, put parentheses unspiritual nature. We are fighting against the world. Now nah, everybody's on Puff Daddy's back. Yep. But they worshiping Puff Daddy last year. Come on. And some of these people we worshiping are no different than him. Children of the devil. Yep. Doing evil. And they want you to worship these people. And be concerned about everything they do and say. The devil is a lie. Yes. That's the world. And it's hard to pull yourself out of the world. It's hard to pull yourself away from these. You young people. Pull yourself out of the screen. You trying to live for God? Come out the screen. You trying to live for God? Cut the phone off. You're trying to live for God, build your own life instead of watching other people's lives. That's right. This culture, this society is corrupt to the core. If you all invested in it, you can't do anything but become corrupt. You got to stand out like a light. Yeah. The unspiritual nature, sometimes we need to look at ourselves because all of us have an unspiritual nature that we're supposed to crucify. Yes. The Bible said crucify the flesh. It don't mean take a nail and hit your hand. Yeah. It means crucify those negative thinking. Crucify that love of gossip. Crucify that love of mess. Crucify that lust. Crucify that pettiness. That's what's supposed to be crucified. Yes. Yes. Once you do that, then your last enemy is Satan and the demons. Now, most of us, Satan ain't got to do much because the TV already got us. The t if it ain't the TV, it's the food. Some of us, the clothes got us. Help me hold <laughs> Picked up one of my goddaughters from the airport. We was driving through Manhattan. We was on 35th Street. Mm. By a Shake Shack. So she said, I'm going to go in the Shake Shack and give me a hamburger. I said, okay, I'll just stay in the car. And the Shake Shack was by a club. And all these girls was coming out. It was dress. Can we call it dress? They have some cloth on their body. Cloth, that's it. That's it. Come on, tell <laughs> so, the truth. Tell the truth. Uh, well, I got no, she had some wild too. And I got in the car and then I said, are these dresses? Because the things were so yeah. short. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know if they were shorts yeah. or dresses. She said, those are dresses. Yeah. And I wanted to get out and say something, but the Lord said, you better drive on mm -hmm. to where you're going. That's the style of the world, yeah. okay? The way people talk, cussing, it's the world style of cuss. Yeah. Oh my goodness, okay. Uh -huh. So those are the three enemies. What are the three enemies? The world, the flesh, the and the devil. All right. What else do soldiers do? Soldiers guard, soldiers attack, and soldiers take orders. So soldiers are, they get drafted or enlist, they train, they fight, they guard, they attack, and they take orders. I saw a clip of uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh -huh. <laughs> and they were telling, uh, Tom Hanks, what was his name in the movie? You remember? Oh. 
Tom Hanks was yeah. the lady. He was right. telling them they were going to take some position. They was like, what? Yeah. yeah. He was like, it's not a double bus. He said, yes, it is. Yeah. He said, who's going to take that hill? Take that. Yeah. So nobody was like, yeah. Yeah. nobody wanted to rotate the hill. And sure enough, somebody got their medic, got killed. Mm -hmm. Got his, I don't know what I, I, I turned my head, but all his intestines was coming out. Yeah. This is a vicious fight. This is a vicious fight. People get killed in this fight. In the fight against Satan in this church, some people got killed. And Satan killed them. Yes. My personal opinion, it wasn't that time. The devil killed them. I do believe there's an appointed time. I also believe if you don't follow God, the devil can kill you before your time. Yes. Right in this church. And I see it in this church. I see the devil destroying people. Now, I try to warn them. I try to stop it. But some people think this is just a joy ride, and it's not, it's a fight. Yes. And some people think, well, I'm a Christian, God's supposed to be hooking me up and expanding my territory. No, <laughs> you're supposed to be a soldier. Now, once God gives you a blessing, you gotta guard it. God give you marriage, you want to be married so bad, now you don't care about your marriage. God give you a church, Pastor, you wanted the church so bad, now them, them ends make you so mad you ready to quit. Negroes, that's what they stand for. <laughs> You're in the choir, you love to sing, but the choir get on your nerves so much you ain't singing. You was once on fire, now you cold as an iceberg. You didn't guard what God gave you. You looking at somebody's gifts and mad because they name get called and you jealous. You're jealous. But you ain't used what God gave you. You haven't fanned it in the flame. That's right. Keep you, talk about that. you ain't been hot with your gifts. You didn't guard it. Soldiers also attack. Now, if you're weak, you can't attack. <laughs> if you're weak, you can't attack. But sometimes the Lord wants to use us in a hostile situation. Yes. And you gotta attack. You gotta have the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Sister Richardson carried me into a situation. I, we was under attack. We were surrounded by a mob. And I called on the Lord. And the Lord brought us out. But sometimes the Lord said, go under attack. Okay. The last thing I want to say today, I'm gonna say this, not to, let me say this. The last thing in this list of what soldiers do. Soldiers take orders. Yes. And remember, you have one standing order. What is it? The standing order is accomplish the mission. Accomplish the mission. I want you to hold on to that. I forgot a lot of things in ROTC, but I held on to a lot of things. One of the things I held on to, if you're a soldier, if you're a commander, no matter what you lose, no matter what happens, you still had an obligation to accomplish your mission. You know another movie, it's a good war movie, Fury, with Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt lost his old tank corps, yeah. but he was supposed to keep the Germans off this road. Right. So there was a bunch of Germans coming with armaments and everything. Right. And his men said, we're going to run? He said, no. Nope. He said, our mission is to stop the Germans on this road. They was like, well, you're crazy. We had nine tanks. We only got one. <laughs> He's like, yep. Yes. He's like, there's a mono. Go, go in that barn and see what we can use. We're going to stop these Germans coming this, over this road. Mm -hmm. And they set up a little trap and it worked for a while. But the Germans had more weapons and more men. And in the end, only one guy survived. But they stopped the Germans. Yes, they did. And next thing you know, the United States Army was rolling. They were all dead. But Brad Pitt, as a commander, accomplished the mission. The mission got to be more important to you than your life. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you a soldier. Yes. <laughs> Come on. <yeah. laughs> all right. All right, let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. We're going to go on with this because I'm not through. Seems like we just started. Yeah, it seems like I just got started. But my whole sense of time is distorted from uh, COVID. I understand. But uh, I want you to take this to heart. I want you to get this in your spirit. Because you're in a battle. Human beings were born to be in a battle. Yes. And I said, why things are so rough? Because of sin and evil in the world. 
but you're going to make it because you got the grace of God. That's why I remember how this whole section started off. Paul didn't just start talking about being a soldier. He started off in verse 1. Mm -hmm. He said, Timothy, be strong in the grace that is ours in Christ Jesus. If you and the Messiah, if you and the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the grace is already in your life. Be strong in that grace. When you're strong in the grace, you know that you don't have to know how. You don't have to know when. You don't have to know why things happen. All you got to do is accomplish the mission. And God will give you everything you need to do just that. I'm a living witness. That's why I'm here. I'm happy. I'm excited. I know God is going to do great things because of the grace of God. All right. I thank God for it. All of you will send it such a great yes. service. Uh, and I got some celebrities here. These are the people I appreciate so much. These people mean more to me than all these fake TV people that the world is trying to tell you to look at and look up to. Let me say this to somebody. Leave Diddy alone. You ain't got diddly squat to do with diddly. Nope. Leave him alone. The, the world, every now and then the world throw up something for you to talk about. This week is Diddy, last year is R. Kelly, next week is year to be somebody else. Keep your mind focused on God. But Margarita Moore is here tonight. Amen. Diane Cumberbatch, Renee Cook, Yvonne Prince, Pam Ingram, Sister Christine Carraway. Woo! <laughs> the Lord was working, boy. We'll get this Carraway on Sunday. Ebony Richardson is here. Right. Charlene Milligan is here. Velma Douglas, Sister Ernestine Kearney, Sister Kearney, we're praying for you. Yes. Sister Kearney is a soldier, as was her husband, Charles Kearney, right. a soldier in the U.S. Army mm -hmm. and a soldier in the Army of the Cross. Amen. And Brother Kearney accomplished his mission. He encouraged my heart many a day and enabled me to go ahead and enable this church to be strong. Yes. Deacon Brickhouse is here. Cynthia Brown is here. Tijuana Wright, Priscilla Douglas, Aaron Wiggins. Rosa Ford, Professor Larry Banks, Reverend McDonald is here, Reverend Joyce McDonald, Brother Douglas, Rochelle Cujo, Trina Cook, Brianna Palacios, Marilyn Tucker, Patty McCuff, Brother Anthony Copeland down in Atlanta, Deacon Robinson out in Long Island, Carol Goodwin, the head of the CIS Ministry Women, Women's Day Election Sunday after service, everybody be there. Gladys Ellington, Lorraine Brandt, Monique Cumberbatch, Shamara Dunn, Victor Newberry, Sheila Newberry, Jason Jackson, Cherie Champlain, Yolanda Roby, Annette Peterson, Sharon Kennedy, Tamel Moore, and Debbie Credo. I thank God for all of you soldiers. Yes. One of my friends, Hubert Barnes, said the church is not a place of entertainment. It's a place where the army comes to get empowered. Right. Amen. We're in the army of the Lord. And if you never sang that song, I'm a soldier, in the army, I want you to learn it. I got my war clothes on. That's right. I believe I'll fight. I believe I'll die. Deacon Irvin Powers was old. His family had uh, insisted that he stop driving. He had an illness that could not uh, be fixed, and he was facing his final moments. Came in a deacon meeting and said, today I want to resign. I can no longer serve as a deacon. And I brought a letter, and he said, Pastor Tell, here's my letter of resignation. I took the letter, tore it up, threw it out. I didn't throw him, I threw it in there. Threw it in there. And I said, Deacon Irving Powers, I saw you singing, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And I saw you singing, I promised him that I will serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I said, Deacon Powers, I do not accept your resignation. You got to die on the battlefield. And he started crying. Okay. <laughs> Deacon Powers started crying. <laughs> and everybody was saying, that's right, we don't accept no resignation. He was a soldier. Yes. Hallelujah. He had been in the United States military, but he was a soldier in the army of the Lord. So he knew. Amen. You got an order from God. Accomplish the mission. Yes. Stop whining. Stop crying. You want to cry? Put problems in the Sudan on you in Google and see what come up. Mm. Wow. Put carnage in Palestine and Google and see what come up. <laughs> yes. 
Put starvation in Ethiopia and see what come up. Put civil war in the Congo and see what come up. Put up addiction in America and see what comes up. You think you got problems? Yeah. I went to a funeral last Thursday. One of my friends was there. And after he got through telling me about his problems, I realized I ain't got no problems up in this church. You're a soldier. You fight. You guard. Train. You protect. You persevere. And you win. Because you got the grace of God on your side. God told Paul, my grace is sufficient. It's enough. It's enough. That's right. Paul said, I'm content with insults, weaknesses, persecution, hardships. Because when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Hallelujah. Ooh. All right. Go to T-C-O-T-O-D-G-I-B-I-N and give a Wednesday night offering so we can keep on going. Um, we we got to see we got special lights and special cameras. We got stuff going down on Instagram now. We got, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube now. Brother Banks, Sister Richardson got us on Instagram. Uh, what else we on? Telephone. We're on telephone. All right, we need new equipment. We need better equipment. Yes, upgrade. We need to upgrade things. I was looking at Sister Richardson had some pictures and I was like, these are good pictures. What number is your phone? She told me 14. Pro. Pro. I'm still on 12. <laughs> Don't worry. You got to get the past the new phone. Don't worry. I'm, 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 I'm on the <laughs> ground say get on up. I'm going to get on up. Why? Because I'm a soldier. I got to have the latest weapon. Amen. Amen. You a soldier too. Fight. Win. Triumph. Now, ask the Lord to show you how to do it. Even soldiers retreat sometimes. <laughs> ask the Lord to show you how to do it. Even soldiers don't always attack directly. Sometimes they swing around the back. Ask the Lord to show you how to do it. God will give you a strategy because God got a strategy. We don't always know what it is, but God got one. And so we thank God. Tonight, we're not going to have an um, overflow because we overflowed on Sunday so much. <laughs> we're still recovering from the Sunday overflow. Uh, and so we're not going to have an old flow. But I want to thank you for coming tonight. I want to thank you all for staying so long for the service. Amen. I want to thank you for praying for your brothers and sisters in Christ, your fellow soldiers. And I want you to keep on praying. Pray for the Kearney family. Yes. Um, our city lost the Chief Gerald Nelson passed. Many of you know him. He's a former commander of Brooklyn North. He reached a high level of chief up in the police department. He passed away. Pray for his family. Yes. And uh, pray for all the situations in the world. Anything else I should announce? Thank the leadership training class. Huh? Thank the leadership training class. I want to thank the leadership training class. Listen, they helped Deacon Flowers, and Deacon Harvey Aldridge, Patton. and Harvey Patton, and Zio, and, Zio, and, Anthony, and Anthony, and Deacon Haynes. And Deacon Haynes. These men, Deacon Haynes stood with me through half the service. Deacon Flowers was with me. Yes. Deacon Aldridge helped me. I think Deacon Aldridge caught the whole church. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> that fell. So y'all better pray for him. Yes. But the leadership training uh, women, because this is all women, yes. they did a fantastic Hallelujah. job. Hallelujah. They did. They and did. I want to thank you yeah. for reminding me, Sister Richardson. Yes. They were awesome. Yes. Uh, it was a great, and you know what it was? It was a great teamwork. It was. Brother Stevens and the musicians, they kept the music hot. They did a wonderful job. It was great teamwork. Yes. And we thank God for that. So we're not going to overflow tonight. We're okay. still trying to get rested yes. so we can get back for Sunday. Mm -hmm. We will let you know our announcements about our brother Kearney, uh, but keep the family in prayer. Amen. Amen. Let me hear a little bit of my song. Huh? Yeah. Uh, I want to hear my song first. It's rich and trying to get away. See, she ain't like all this military stuff. It ain't what you want to do. It's what you have to do. Hard work. And what you have to do? Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. Hard work. That's what they say. Hard work. Now this is a running song. This is what they run on a five mile run. Hard work. I get up about a quarter to three. Get up a quarter to three. And earn my pay. Hard work. Start working out. Hard work. 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 Hard work.
days of work. Another day of work. Hard work, hard work, that's what they say. Hard work, hard work, I earn my pay. Hard work, get off the rock, I move on down. Hard work, where to go, make the call. Let's go ahead. Bring it on the Father God, thank you. Hard work, get up, let's go. Lord God, you worked hard to make this world and this universe, and then you rested. Help us to work hard knowing that we will have rest on high that's beautiful. Bless your people for coming in tonight. Bless us, Lord, and make us soldiers of the cross. Make us soldiers of the kingdom. Make us soldiers of grace. Soldiers of love. Strengthen your people, oh God. This is our prayer. We thank you and we praise you for filling us with the Holy Spirit. We receive this lesson tonight. Yes. The name above every name, the mighty, the maximus name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. Y'all keep on working hard for the Lord.